The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 167. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories about standing women finding their inner journey to self-confidence five days a week. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com to check out amazing blog articles and our killer resources. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a special lady who's all the way from the UK. She is a certified coach, a misfit turned maven, an author, and an adventurer, and I'm just really glad to have her on today to share her story with us about self-confidence and her journey. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Ebony Allard. Ebony, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Of course. I'm really well, Sheena. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I love your podcast, by the way. I am, I have a really kind of detailed story, but I'm coach and I help other people really, those people who don't feel like they belong or maybe feel like a round peg in a hole to really uh, accept who they are and be proud of it and and I do that because that's my story so for such a long time I felt like I didn't belong anywhere I didn't fit in I wasn't the same as everybody else and for um for, I guess in my first career and also in my second so I worked in the film industry as a set decorator and production buyer um, and then I ran a virtual assistant a personal assistant business I just did feel like I belonged and I didn't trust myself and so At the end of my first career, I suffered from burnout and I was just exhausted and crashed and burned after working TV industry for for such a long time. And then the second career, um, I built this business and I was in control and I felt like that would mean that I would look after myself. But in reality, I made it to a bunch of other people's expectations and really didn't trust myself. So I did it how I thought you should do it. I built a business that looked great on the outside, but felt didn't feel as good on the inside so I've had a bit of a breakdown and so now having learned all my lessons and and really made that click um, I teach and help people to create businesses that really feel as good on the inside as they look on the outside. Thanks for sharing that and I love that you said you know just because a business looks great on the outside doesn't mean it it feels good on the inside because a lot of people you know are in business sometimes for the wrong reasons or you know they're just focused on the money and not realizing you know it's their calling or true passion and And, you know, that's just as important, too, because if your heart's not in it, then, you know, you can't sustain a successful business. So, you know, I'm glad I'm glad you mentioned that. And Ebony, what's your cultural background? Uh, I guess the best way to describe it really is Jewish European. So whilst my practice, my family aren't practicing in the Jewish faith, it's uh, my ancestry and and definitely where my family are from. And um, because of that kind of all over Europe. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, you know, what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? I think it's that it would, I had such a hard time with this question because there are so many that I absolutely love. But I guess the one I love the most is that the more you love your decisions, the less you need others to. I really love that quote. Because especially as women, we always base our decisions on other people, right? I know I have in the past, and sometimes I still deal with that. But I mean, you know, we're so afraid that if we make our own decisions, that it's the wrong decision, it could be it could turn out to be a, a, you know, like a chaos or something like something bad when really, you know, our just, you know, we know more about ourselves than anyone else. And whatever decision we make, it can always, it will always go in the right path even if it doesn't look like it so you know that's a great quote you shared and in your own words how would you define self-confidence I guess it leads on really nicely from that so for me it's uh, listening to your inner guidance system trusting yourself and then taking action based on it I love it I mean those are all really what what it means right just learn learning our inner guidance right learning to trust ourselves is probably the biggest thing right because as women we're so prone not to trust ourselves we're so prone to um, just follow what everyone else does, right? Uh, the society has this like, you know, definition of what a woman should be or act when really it's just someone's definition and not ours. And we can create whatever we want in our own lives. So thanks for sharing that. And, you know, Ebony, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? It really was believing that everyone else was better than me and that they 
that they all had it all figured out and and that I didn't and I was the only one who didn't and so I guess what that felt like was just really ungrounded and uncertain I think a lot of women feel that way too I mean I know I have I always felt like you know I have nothing to offer and everyone else around me feels you know it it, it seems like they have everything according to plan and you know a lot of people don't remember Remember that sometimes, even though things may look good on the outside, you know, you don't know what happens on the inside, right? You don't know, you know, if they're having trouble or if they're, you know, going through something, you know, just because everything looks picture perfect on the outside doesn't mean it always looks good on the inside. So, you know, when you realize that, you know, you could go out there and do your own thing, that you are capable of creating the life that you want, what was that aha moment in your lifetime when you realized that? I was thinking about this today and I guess it was just really understanding that no one could do it for me, right? So you can read all the self-help books in the world and you can watch other people do it and you can theorize from your couch or your, you know, from your living but until you actually do the work, until you take some action and just go, right, I'm doing this, it's not going to happen. Like No one else can do it for you. And for me, that realization, uh, I think, came one day where I... I just decided I was going to do the work. I love it. And it's true, right? Because sometimes we feel like we're waiting for someone to save us, realizing that the only person that can save you is you, right? And that's by learning, you know, inner guidance, taking action and just doing it regardless of what anyone thinks. And, you know, sometimes, you know, we don't realize that it's really we're, we're our own saviors, right? I mean, I remember I used to be like that, you know, I was just waiting for someone to save me from like, whatever I was going through, not realizing, you know, the only person that I needed was me to save myself from whatever I was going through, whether it was a breakup or, you know, I was just going through like a depressed time, things like that. I mean, it, it's really just up to you to just go out there, get it, get up and take the action. So, you know, after having that realization, what's your life like now? I always feel like it sounds really smug, but I have a life that I love. And, and really the reason for that is that I'm, I'm kind, but I take care of myself in a way that no one else ever could. Because just like you said, I'm the only person who really gets how to take care of me. Awesome. And I love that you said that, right? You take care of yourself. Um, so many women forget, to re- forget that, right? That they, they have to take care of themselves because it's important, right? If they want to be able to love one another or love other people out there, they have to love themselves first. And, you know, it doesn't mean that they're being selfish. You know, you have to start with you so you can um, attract the right things into your life, attract the right people into your life. So it's really important to go out there and just take care of yourself. If you feel like going to get a pedicure done, go ahead and do it. Because no one's, like you said, no one's going to know you better than you. So I really, you know, love that tip that you mentioned. And Ebony, to the woman who's listening to this episode, you know, she may be in her own uh, journey to self-confidence and she may be going through the same issues that you have in the past. What would be that one tip you would give to her? I think it comes from a continuation of what we were just saying. Like, And so for me, I like to describe it that you can't, if you're trying to look after other people or give from an empty cup, there's nothing to give. So if you fill your cup up first, so full that it's overflowing, then there's plenty to give to other people. So that would be my one tip. I love that. And, you know, it's so true. We got to fill up that cup. And when it and it yeah when it overflows that's when we can give that love the kind the, the right kind of love that we can give to others right without feeling you know the need to have others love us because we love ourselves so much that we have more than enough right just giving abundance out there in the world so I love that tip that you mentioned and Ebony if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with yeah I'm um, Ebony Allard on uh, Instagram and on Twitter and I'm always there and if they wanted to come um, and check out my website and, and see the work that I do in my book it's entrepreneurenabler.com or misfit2maven.com Thank you for sharing that and listeners if you wanted to connect with Ebony you can also head on over to the com and look for Ebony's name her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about And I really just want to thank Ebony for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Ebony. My pleasure. Thank you. Not a problem. It was an honor to have you on. And listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of another amazing woman's journey to self-confidence. And we'll catch you later. Bye for now. Thank you for connecting with us on the Tao of Self-Confidence. 
Visit thetowofselfconfidence.com for links to everything we chatted about, as well as killer resources, gifts, and so much more.